Now I'm going to be talking, introducing you to, to an app called Activity Monitor, which is built into your macOS. So if you search for Activity Monitor and launch it up, if you go into Window and select CPU Usage, GPU History, and CPU History, you're going to see a lot of options on the screen. And this is the current state of my Mac. You can see that my graphics card is currently being used around 25%. My internal graphics card is not being used, and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 cores. Now, technically, I have a 6-core MacBook Pro, but that 6-core MacBook Pro has a feature called hyper-threading. And what that does is it treats each core as two cores. This helps alleviate traffic if there are apps blocking the route, but for now, you can assume that I have 12 cores, 12 areas for apps to take over. And on this screen here, going to be going into the CPU tab and I've sorted my apps by CPU. So you can see that OBS, which is the software I'm using to record the screen, is using 80% of my CPU. What that means is using 80% of one of the cores. And you can see Activity Monitor itself is using 10 to 20% every now and then. So by monitoring the performance, it reduces the performance of your system because every single segment, it has to take a snapshot of what's going on in your system. And this takes time. You can alleviate this by going into view, update frequency, and change it from every five seconds to every two seconds to me, every one second, because I always close this application when I'm not using it. So I've got a lot of applications here, and I can see that OBS is using 80%. What you can do if you don't like a certain app, you can force close it, or you can just quit it from the dock. But at least this gives you an idea of what's going on in the background of your system, what could be hogging up resources. It doesn't unfortunately give you a history of the app. For example, maybe this app is clever, maybe it's some kind of virus when it detects activity monitor is running, it shuts it down. It doesn't do that, but it's a start. Next up, I wanna show you the memory tab. What's cool about this is it shows you on the bottom right here how much physical memory you have, how much memory you're using, how much is in the cache, and how much is in a swap, and how much is compressed. So just a quick brief on what this stuff means is, wired memory is memory that cannot be moved, it has to stay in memory. App memory, it can be compressed, it can be played around with by the operating system. The danger is what happens is, if your wired memory gets too big, too big for the amount of memory that your system currently has, you're gonna get a lot of issues because your apps can no longer sustain itself. And secondly, as the amount of RAM, the app memory, grows, the operating system is gonna to have to start doing some clever things with managing it. For example, it will try to compress that RAM and save it to the SSD optionally. And what that means is every single time you go back to access that, it's gonna to have to uncompress that RAM, put it back into the memory, and then use it. So if you're constantly switching between apps and it's constantly have to compress and uncompress apps, you're gonna find that this makes your computer run a little bit slower. So what you kinda of wanna do is just make sure that you're not using too much RAM. So if you look on the main segment of this computer, you can see that I've sorted by memory. And I can see that a kernel task is using the most amount of RAM. And kernel task tends to be things like, for example, file operations, stuff that the system's currently doing. So in this case, OBS is using 700 megabytes, but you can see that the kernel task is using two gigabytes. So from my assumptions, I can see that OBS is using RAM. The kernel task is probably the video file that's currently being saved to my SSD via OBS, but there's no direct link to that. What you can do is sometimes if you get a spawn service, you can see who spawned that service. So for example now, just say there's an app I'm not sure of, just say caffeine. I'm gonna click on info, and it's gonna tell me all the files it's being used. So here I can see that this is the location of the app. So it's inside my applications folder, tools, caffeine. Let's see, applications folder, tools, caffeine. There it is. And it's running the app which is inside it called caffeine itself, which lives inside contents macOS. And that's correct. But it's also using this, this file. It's also using that file. It's using that image to display on the taskbar. It's got a car file. It's using that font. It's using all these different libraries. And that kind of makes the app size grow. But the good thing about it using libraries is libraries are shared across other applications. So for example, macOS provides lots of different libraries to use. So don't be surprised when you see apps using other libraries on your system. It's just part of the, the process. But if there's an app you don't know about, you can kind of get some hints as where it's existing in the world. So over here, my memory seems to be good. Next up, I'm going to show you energy. Now, energy kind of shows you the stuff that kills your battery. And 
it's it's kind of like a pseudoscience. It's an estimate of what's going on. It's not an exact representation. It's not 100 watts here or there, but it tells you what's the biggest hog of your resource. So right now, you can see that OBS is using pretty much 77% or points of my energy on my system. So if I close that down, I'll have a greater battery life. I can see also I've got a firewall here that's using 0.1 to 1%, just blocking all these kind of connections in the background. And this is using energy. The great thing about this tab is it has something called average energy impact. And what that does is it tells you on average, how much of your system's resources is being dedicated to this app on regards to energy. So even though right now OBS is using 80 points of the energy, overall it's only used a third of that because I haven't been recording this whole time. I've only started recording a little while into its life cycle. Okay, next is disk. Now this one is gonna give you some tips on what is going on with your system in the background, disk and network. So right now, MDS stores for me is written, has written two gigabytes of data. Now, what you can do is you can go into the Google if you don't know what the app is and you can find out what it is. And it tells me that it's actually part of Apple's Spotlight services. What Apple has is a service called Spotlight and it goes ahead and index your hard drive data to help you find folders, apps, files, all this kind of stuff in the background. To help you find all this stuff, which means when you launch the Spotlight service, that question mark at the top there, you can type in whatever, for example, Chrome, and it will have it listed on your system. And this has to run all the time in the background to index your data. Now this is written two gigabytes of data. <laughs> Not sure why it needs two, two gigabytes of data, but it's been open for a while, so I'm not too worried about that. And it's official Apple app, so I'm not too worried about that. Other things, I can see that FMPEG has written some data, Sublime Text is doing some stuff in the background. But if you've got like a rogue app running in the background, writing all this stuff, reading lots of files, could it be a virus? Probably. Next up, network. Now this is, this is the dodgy AF apps you wanna look into. And this tells you how much bytes is being sent, received, and how many packets of data is being sent. Now, bytes is kind of, it's more useful than, well, it depends. Packets is the number of packets it sends across the network. Bytes is like a figure, of the amount of storage it sends. I personally would sort it on sent bytes or received bytes. Probably the best thing to do is first sort it by sent bytes because what you wanna know is, do you have a rogue app on your system sending data from your computer onto the internet? And if you sort by sent bytes, you can see that the, the most used one is a core one, it's core speech. So that's probably Siri trying to detect my voice. Whoa, what's that? What's that about? That's dodgy. Um, that's only sent 2.7 megabytes. So I don't think it's been sending some dodgy webcam videos of me. So I'm pretty content with that. Of course, the problem with this view is it doesn't include the history. So if an app notices that you open up Activity Manager and closes itself down really quickly, you're not gonna have a record of that. But, you know, are apps that smart? Are programmers that smart? Are criminals that smart? Maybe, I don't know. Don't hack me, please, thank you.